All right. So I'll start again. Starting good morning. It's the twenty second. Um, and the purpose of today's session is the question of why why careers, why do we have both sides? Why do we have the type of work that we're doing? Uh, the work that we're doing um and why we think they're important from my side light uh there's no anything beyond to create a different side of your brain or anything discussion about why is career important uh, for a bit of background i have is that the can you guys hear me? Is is the sound not very good? Should I, should I come closer? Can you guys just give me a reaction if you Carrot can hear me? Anyone else? Abraham cannot hear me. Okay, let me. It's breaking up a bit. Switch networks. Give me. Okay, can you, is this better? Can you hear me now? Can you give me a reaction if you can hear me? Yeah, okay, that sounds better. Okay, <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's start again. So the point of today's discussion is really light and relaxed. Uh, we're not gonna be talking content. I'm not here to teach you anything about careers, how to apply for a job, how to communicate, nothing like that today. The point of today's session is really just to discuss why do we think careers is important and why do we have uh, both sides of our work, both the technical work as well as the career side of our, the career side of what we're doing. Um, we're at about half of the class here, which uh, which is a sign of how seriously people are taking careers, which is it is what it is. Um, but I'm going to present something briefly, and it's really light content. But I want what I want to have today is more of a discussion uh, rather than any sort of presentation. But you can take the what I've put together uh, really just as a prompt. So, oh no, ah, here we go. Just give me one second here. I have to fix one thing so that I can present happily. There's an old slide in here that I wanna get rid of. Okay, perfect. Um, Da, 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 da. I'm going to present again. <clears throat> okay, so the world record holder, um, and I, the world record holder, I'm going to be asked, calling on people to interact with us or interact with me here. Um, the, wor the world record holder for standing on one leg is 76 hours long. Right, so that's just a little bit longer than three days. So this person had to stand on one leg for three days. And the person who's done it for the longest in the world was 1997, was 76 hours. And he said it was incredibly painful. I don't know what the record is for standing on two legs. I'm gonna guess that it's probably um, significantly longer than that. Actually, I should have looked that up. The point is, uh, the point that I'm trying to make here in a very roundabout way, and I'm gonna talk through a couple of other analogies is that we believe that if you are just focusing on the technology side of what you're doing, it is uh, necessary to understand the technology, but it's an insufficient, uh, you're insufficiently preparing yourself for what it is, uh, the careers that we're preparing you for. Um, so as humans, we have two legs and you need to stand on both legs. Um, so that's, that's just the point of this guy, Suresh Joachim. A bit of a funny person. He has, I think, uh, more than 60 world records. It's kind of his job. It's his business. He raises money and runs his business by setting world records, including all sorts of weird and funny world records. So I wanted to get, so this is where I want you to interact with me. Um, everyone has, I assume, if anyone's ever eaten out at a restaurant, can you put your hand up? Can you react? 
Give me a reaction if you've ever eaten out. Yeah, so lots of people. Has anyone never eaten out at a restaurant? Has anyone never eaten out? No? Okay. So if you go to a restaurant, or let's say you own a restaurant, uh, and you're hiring a cook, and you have a choice between somebody who is an exceptionally good cook, but is horrible at working with other people, versus somebody who knows how to cook really well, and who can collaborate with other people in the kitchen, can somebody unmute and just let me know which uh, which one of those two cooks would they be more likely to uh, hire? Those two cooks are you more like Rudolph? Yeah, the one who knows how to cook well and knows also how to deal with the people, how yeah. to collaborate why? with people. Why? Why is that? Yeah, because collaboration is uh, a a core part of a uh, human relationship women want to be want to to feel good with the others with whom he is working with but if somebody is a, a in the a field and uh working with somebody but the person is not is difficult to deal with he won't feel good himself internally and even if he want to to pro to produce better he, he, he will have uh, some blockers, so we want ways to deal with somebody who knows how to communicate well with us. But what if what if the person? What if you have a really exceptional? So this can go to anybody. What if you have somebody who's really good at cooking, um, who's really knows how to use all the ingredients, can get exceptional flavors, but they're a complete jerk in the kitchen? Would anyone want to hire that person? Would anyone want to work with such a person? And the, the point that I'm trying to make is that I think one of the misnomers that uh, we often have is to feel that if we are technically strong, that's enough. And 100% of you are here because you want to get a global level job. And 100% of you, when you go to work, will have to collaborate with other people. And that's part of what it's. Uh, that's part of what we're trying to provide to you um, as part of the non-technical or the career skills uh, training. That's part of why we have the stand-ups. That's part of why we have interactive sessions. I'd like to hear from some from some more people. And I know it sounds like I'm belaboring the point, but would any of you be interested in hiring a cook who is only technically excellent? but is not uh, not able to work well with other people? Would you hire such a person? Can we think of some cases when we, we would be interested in hiring such a person? Yeah, we'll go to Aya first. Hi, Aaron, how are you? I'm good, Aya, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. So uh, there is an Ethiopian proverb uh, saying that uh, which means um, it's not the food that matters, it's the, 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 the person or his, his personality. Mm -hmm. So uh, eating the food only might not give you the, the satisfaction. Uh, it should be always love, you know? So for that, the, the chef has to be uh, collaborative and, you know, <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm just supporting the Rudolf's idea. Thank you. Yeah. What about some of the people? So there's, so hire the individual only if you want to fast to hasten the closure of the restaurant. Yeah. Now, now, what if there's somebody who's really good? What if somebody is used to work at a Michelin-starred restaurant? Somebody who's like, I don't know, one of the world's greatest cooks. What, can anyone think of when they would want to hire this person? Melat. Uh, okay, so I think if I was running a restaurant that is actually world class restaurant that has that is supposed to provide ex exquisite taste to uh, my customers, I definitely would consider hiring this um, man because uh, it's not just I can't really uh, provide mediocre food to uh, owning a restaurant that is international as well as. Uh, promising this exquisite taste, you know. So I would definitely consider hiring this man 
but I would also, since in the kitchen there needs to be, let's say, let's assume this guy is the master chef and he's supposed to lead everybody. Uh, I wouldn't put him as a master chef. I would probably offer him, offer him uh, some payment that is higher than everybody else's because he does most of the cooking, but I would set up the uh, kitchen to where uh, he wouldn't have to interact with everybody and also uh, some uh, frequently with uh, the other chefs, you know, so he, yep. so that he could do the work, but uh, he doesn't have to interact with other people since he's not really nice. So I definitely yep. would consider him in this scenario. So what, I, what I'm hearing here, and I think it's an interesting point, is that if somebody is technically good, even if they're technically excellent, there are additional costs that would accrue to the business if you are not able to work well with other people. So we talked about hiring as having the person work in a separate area. We have to think about what this person is going to be doing, how they're going to be interacting differently or separately. And so these all mean additional costs. And so if you're a business owner or if you're an employer or if you're a hiring manager, the point that I want to make is that if you are not uh, technically, if you're only technically excellent, but you don't know how to work well with other people, excuse me, and it doesn't need to be um, an extreme example where somebody is a total jerk, but if you are not a good collaborator and cooking is a collaborative environment, but so are the jobs that you're gonna go into, learning how to collaborate with other people is really important. Um, and as a business owner, I think all of us recognize that having a technically excellent person is really important but if you still want to hire this person it's going to cost you a lot more money um, because you're going to have to set things up in such a way that this person is still able to be productive so i want to use a second example all of us how many people here have ever taken a taxi has anyone ever taken a taxi before yeah could be ride uber anything similar now what is it that you expect from a taxi driver so let's you can raise your hand you can type your answers tell me what you expect well i mean it's written right there but tell me what you expect from a taxi driver yvonne and then rudolph from a taxi driver one i expected the person to obviously know how to drive because my life is on the line and then yeah. i also expect the person to be courteous to know yeah. how to speak to me to know how to communicate with me because i am the customer mm -hmm. i expect the person to know how to tell me i'm sorry i don't know the direction to this place if the person doesn't know the direction to where i am going to i can say that um, if the person knows how to communicate maybe we can agree on some things like I can show you direction. I can tell the taxi driver, I can show you direction to where I am going. But if the person doesn't communicate, we will have a big problem and I will end up not taking that taxi at all. Yes, thank you. Yeah, anyone else? So good driver, safety, Carol has written. Anyone else can write, uh, Rudolf? Yeah, basically what I, I I do agree with what Yvonne have said, and if I, I would like to say something to be similar, so. You'd like to say something similar, okay. And so the point that we're trying to make here is that <clears throat> the same with cooking, the same with driving, I think the same with many careers, and definitely the same is true in the fields of generative AI, machine learning, data engineering, and Web3. Um, none of you will be individual contributors. This is why companies exist, to coordinate the efforts of many people. And the glue or the uh, the oil, the lubrication, all of the, the thing that makes it work is knowing how to work well with other people. So one of the questions that I wanted to ask, and I wanted to stop here and have a discussion, and again, my, my presupposition here is that I feel like many of the people in cohort A feel like they have to make a choice between what should I focus on? Do I need to focus on the technical side of what I'm doing or do I need to focus on the non-technical or the careers content? And so I wanted to have a discussion here. Is it necessary to choose between the two of them? 
So what do you guys think? Must one choose? Is it Does it have to be either or, so either technical or careers, or is it possible to do both? So let's, so we always have the same two people, which I really appreciate, Yvonne and Rudolf. Um, let's hear from somebody else before we go to Yvonne and Rudolf. I'd like to know if it's just, uh, everyone is just logged in and I don't know what the other people are doing. So we have uh, same with the four usual subs. Okay, we have somebody new, Abel. Okay, so the thing is, I consider the career tasks or the non-technical aspects very important uh, as much as the career, the technical ones, because uh, I believe the thing is, the technical side might vary uh, depending on the sector we are or the uh, job sector we are involved in something. But the career thing is constant. It's, it's going to be there wherever the job is throughout our social interaction and everything. So I try to focus as much on the career task as well because it provides me a window to look at how the professional world look like and how I should behave and how I should approach things. So I very much consider this career task as a lifelong lessons rather than a specific domain knowledge lessons. So I give much consideration for those tasks as well. Okay. Thank you. Is there somebody who disagrees? I mean, obviously that's the right answer, right? That's or that's the answer that I, I believe. Is there somebody who disagrees and is willing to kind of put their hand up and say, "Look, I think that's true, but there's not enough time. I think that's true, but I'm going to learn it later." I'd love to hear a dissenting viewpoint. Is there somebody who feel who thinks differently? So, Rodolf, do you think differently, or do you agree? You still have your hand up. Because the point of a discussion is not just to say, yes, we all agree. Uh, OK. Um, I do not agree with uh, Abel, but uh, something I have encountered during this uh, gene training, because we need to handle both, um, is personally me, I focus more on technical parts rather than uh, career parts. I'm, I'm giving my honest a way to to deal with me up to now but at the same times uh, i'm not i'm not neglecting the the career ass assessment but the time i'm giving to the skills the technical skills are much than the time i give into career assessment and i was even planning to 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 discuss with uh, maybe Pascaline or maybe you yourself to to ask how can we balance how can we what what will be the strategy to balance to to, to handle both and because at the end of the week I rush a lot to to submit uh, uh to do my my career assessment and yeah so yeah it's I definitely great, know that it is question. important it's a great question. So I'm not going to answer your question. I'm going to ask someone else to answer your question. So who can help answer Rudolf's question? <laughs> Where's everyone else, guys? You guys are letting your colleagues monopolize you. So <clears throat> for everyone who's on the call and is not willing to have a discussion, um, I just want to go on record right now and say it's important that you get used to unmuting yourself and talking. Because when you're working, you're going to be working. Many of you will, at some point in your career, be working remotely, and you can hide behind your un. Uh, you can hide. You can try and hide, but uh, you're not going to get very. You're not going to get as far in your job if you're not willing to unmute and to say something. So I'm going to ask for people that I appreciate. Yvonne is here. I think she's able to explain it. I'll come to her if no one else wants to speak, but I want people to put their hand up and to practice speaking. So we'll go to Fanuel, Mubarak, Karad, and then Yvonne. So how, how do we answer the question that uh, Rudolf has? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, sorry for being late. Um, can I answer the question first? The yeah. share screen? Uh, so my opinion on this is like, I don't think it's a choice. I mean, 
a career is a career like even if it is technical or like especially in our you know industry like you have to know the technical stuff but at the end of the day like you have to be able to talk to people you know trying to convince people of something or you know trying to get your point across so the career part of any industry is important so i i don't take it as you know choose between but like the technical part will eventually turn into you know the career part because at the end of the day you're not going to your technical thing, you know, to the end. So you have to change. Like you have to, you know, help others get where you are, or you know, be a mentor, or have, you know, a, a sense of like, you know, you know, having wisdom and you know, trying to, uh, you know, like gather people and you know, trying to you know get them where you are. So in that sense, I don't think it is. So in to answer Rudolf's question, like. They're both important, like especially in our case currently, like we have to focus on both. I mean, sometimes if we're behind on some technical stuff, we have to allocate some time towards that. But at the end of the day, they're both important. So you have to focus on both in this scenario. But how did you do that? Right? That's a, that sounds great. That's like saying I want to spend less money and have a nicer house. How do you do it? Uh, that's a great question, actually. Yeah, but I what in do this you do? case, like, what do you do? You mean to finish the career part and the technical part? How do you find the balance? Well, like, I think at first it was overwhelming, as Rudolf mentioned, because we didn't know the pacing of the training. So, uh, I think allocating, you know, a time for it in whatever situation you're in can help a lot. That's what I learned at least. Like give attention to it and not do it like when the you know deadline appears or when you have less time to do it. So allocating I think a good time for both is a good approach to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's hear from Carol. Okay guys. Uh... So what I try to do is uh, I try to attend the I do attend the career session and get an understanding of what's expected from us and everything, and then I try to start it uh, as soon as possible and try to make a draft out of it, and uh, I try to edit it along the way. You know, like I'm not going to give it just uh, a block of time and do it at that time, but I try to make a draft and edit it or, or you know make it better as, as i go along so that i can get you know like more uh, more insight into it as time goes and also get a better result okay yeah that reminds me of the 80 20 rule where people say that you get 80 percent of the result in 20 percent of the work and then the, the next 20% of the result takes another 80% of the work. Uh, let's go to Yvonne and then to Mubarak. For me, what I try to do is integrate it with my daily life because every day, every time, in the morning, in the evening, at night, I communicate with people. So I try to apply the challenge that we have been asked in communication and think about it. And then you'll find that by the end of the day, I would have had maybe two to three points on what have, would have been asked of that challenge. I go, not them down. And then maybe by the end of the week, maybe on Friday, I come together, I bring my points together, I add them together. And yeah, I find that I have done that challenge and it's done. So I just integrate it with my daily communication and daily life skill because every day I deal with people now and then. And to answer the question that is on the screen, I think that um, I might be wrong. I really don't know. But sometimes recruiters can exchange technical skills for career skills. I have had recruiters say that if they find someone who has technical skills not who te whose technical skills are not perfect to say but they know how to communicate they can pick that person and train that person on the job you know they say 
that person will learn on the job. They will learn as they move on, as long as they know how to communicate. I am sure that if they do not know anything, they will speak to me. They will tell me what they do not know. They will, they will do <coughs> a great, they will have a great teamwork who will work together and I will be able to achieve my goal. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and I mean, one, <clears throat> one thing to add to that is the, even the best person has to figure out what work needs to get done. And again, we're not talking about joining individual companies or becoming solo, solo entrepreneurs or solopreneurs. We're talking about working in teams. So, yeah, let's go to Mubarak, and then we can keep going. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you well. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, of course, uh, not even to answer, even to support uh, Rudolf we or most of us uh, face the challenge uh, that uh, doing the career session or the technical session uh, when the sub sub submission deadline is uh, reaching so um, the as uh, Yvonne said uh, i discussed uh, i discussed with uh, my colleagues about the challenge uh, about the career uh, and the technical so having a discussion with me be good to save time uh, and also uh, the technical the technical challenge of ten academy is uh, much more intense so we all focus on the technical part because uh, even uh, even we didn't give a time we can't uh, achieve it so uh, even uh, we give a focused time uh, for the career task i think we can do it with uh, less time uh, compared to uh, the technical and uh, having the discussion may help and uh, to answer the question on the screen i think uh, both are uh, necessary uh, and when it comes to especially an interview part uh, recruiters uh, may focus on uh, uh, technically we, can, we say is a career content like maybe social skills so having both is necessary to get a job uh, that is what i can say and uh, uh, i was eating that is why i was quite <laughs> okay I, I hope you had a good uh, good lunch um yeah i mean i i think that there's the <clears throat> One of the implicit things that we're trying to do, and it's different than saying working on explicit career challenges, one of the implicit things that we're trying to do is to force you to develop your prioritization and your time management skills. We recognize that the technical work is significant, um, but the, whole, the way the entire pro program is set up um, is implicitly trying to get you to uh, improve and to set up your career skills. Um, and a big one of those is prioritization. So I want to go, I just want to make it clear to everybody that even if the pace, um, even if your employer is demanding less of you than we're demanding from you these days, I believe that the learning how to prioritize and to pick the important parts of the work, to choose the right colleagues to work with and to find the most efficient way to work with those people will help you progress more than simply learning um, technology ABC, approach one, two, three, platform X, Y, Z. So I just want to say that again, that learning a piece of technology is less important than coming up with the right mindset and the right approach to doing your work. And so that's why I think having this discussion about what's the right way to balance between technical and non-technical work or technical and careers work is an important one uh, and we probably could have had it uh, earlier in the session one of the reasons that nobody has asked is why are we having this session today we feel that there's a number of people who are not handing in not enough people are handing in careers assignments in the way that we're expecting so i wanted to have this session to make sure that it was clear why are we uh why do we have this and how does it fit in uh to the work into the overall program into the work that we're doing 
Um, there's three competencies that we're we're emphasizing in our careers work or our non-technical work. Number one is being professional in a global level job. And for us, that competency, somebody who has mastered this competency at the junior level means that they understand the expectations of global level employers and they d demonstrate the required level of professionalism to go from application to interview to job offer. So that's really at the very uh, starting phase of your career. An employer wants to know, are you being professional? And this is an amalgamation of many different uh, aspects of knowledge, skills, ideas, um, and attitudes. But when you are being interviewed and somebody is asking you um, to say something, they're seeing if you put your hand up, they're seeing the way you present yourself, they're seeing, did you show up on time? Are you, if you have your camera on, are you wearing professional clothing? I think if you put all of that together, we want you to be professional. The second is we want you to be able to share results to collaborate and communicate with your team, including with your remote team. And so that means collaboration towards a shared goal, that you're able to prepare written materials for collaboration, visual summaries, including slides. You can self-manage your tasks and you can understand management goals. So again here, um, this is a collection or an amalgamation of many different things. So I want to highlight the ability to self-manage your tasks. Um, we should be adding self-manage your time, and I think that's implicitly there. And then finally, understanding the management goals. That last one, to me, is one of the most important differentiators between somebody who is, who maybe, maybe that's a, a very, very, very good predictor of the speed at which you will progress through your career. So somebody who understands what his or her manager wants is more likely, irrespective of how good or how poor they are in their technology, understanding what a manager wants is, I believe, much more important than understanding any one piece of technology. Does anyone disagree with that? If you have a good manager, if your manager is lost, then that's going to be problematic. Does anyone disagree with that? I'm going to say it again. Understanding what your manager or what your company wants, which direction your organization is going in, is more important than any specific aspect of technical knowledge. Does anyone disagree? Nobody disagrees. Can somebody give me a sign of life? Am I, is my interest? Rudolph, okay, I'm glad. Yeah, I do not agree with you. Uh, if I can give a comment quickly. Uh, yeah. And then I want to go to Mubarak. He disagrees, so I want to, I want to hear from Mubarak afterwards. <laughs> can I go or can I stay? Mubarak will say his mind. No, no, you go ahead, and then. Okay, so yeah. uh, a vision is very important, and if you are in a team and you have different different vision, uh, probably you will have a different way to to go, and you will divide and you won't work together. But if you know where the whole team is going, because the vision is something we, it's not something we, we want to reach right now, it is in the future. And you have this vision, then you, then you know that yes, you, you and your team are going in the same direction and you want to achieve something common. So having uh, what, what, vision okay. is... What about, forget vision. Vision is five, 10 years. What about five to 10 days, five to 10 weeks? So I, I, let's not make it, let's, let's not make it uh, too philosophical. Okay. But if, if you're assigned a task by your manager, it's not really about vision, but it's, uh, it takes a real understanding of when, a, when somebody says design something, write me a piece of software. Now understanding implicitly what are they, what do they want, even if they haven't said it? What have they talked about? What, have, what are they thinking about in terms of speed of execution, security, um, building for uh, that it can be extendable, building it in an object oriented way? Should I reuse code? Should I build something totally new? Um, how much time should I spend? What should I prioritize? I think those are, that's much more what I mean. I think the vision side is fine, right? You're looking five to 10 years out. 
But in every task, there are implicit or unsaid things. And understanding that is really important. I'd say that's that's vision is for me five to 10 years. This is really having, um, being aware of your circumstances and being aware of the priorities of the organization. So that, that's more what I meant. Mubarak? Okay, in that case, yeah, I think it is debatable, but I will, I will, I will, I will let Mubarak say his mind first. <laughs> yeah. Mubarak, I hope you had a good lunch. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, like, uh, I agree with you. No for the question. Not no, come on. You're idea. supposed to disagree. <laughs> you put yourself no, down. no, no. So now you it have is to obvious. Agree. It is obvious to agree is it, is it on obvious? that point. But if, yeah. if it's obvious, then why why are we even having this discussion? Because then then there's a there's a gap between theory and practice, right? Everybody knows it, but nobody's doing it. Yeah, the, the challenge is uh, when it comes to submitting the career session as uh, What's the uh, challenge. The cha the challenge the challenge is uh, the technical uh, part of the training uh, yeah. needs much more time. So uh, giving time for that and. Uh, when it comes to the career, uh, even you you may uh, use uh, an AI technology to submit your task. So <laughs> it, it is less, uh, it takes less time to do it. I that hope you guys is, can uh, stand on one leg. Uh, of course, <laughs> that is the challenge. What, wh why we are uh, having the discussion today, not. Uh, yeah, but but I, yeah i don't know i mean it's i think this is where we have to do we have to do both so even if it's a challenge i know that people here find uh find rags really exciting right it's like oh wow we're doing the next llm the next thing but i can guarantee you that the next thing like all the stuff we were teaching two years ago is now out of season it's out of it's been replaced and now with uh, generative AI, I think the pace of the pace of development is increasing. So, wouldn't it make it? Wouldn't it be even more important to spend a little bit less time? So maybe let me ask you another question: Are you here for a leaderboard ranking, or are you here to learn? Uh, I'm here to learn, to be honest. Mm. But uh, sometimes may that thing uh, have a little impact. Yeah, uh, maybe seeing your name on the last uh, list <laughs> may yeah. not be good, but we all are here uh, to scale uh, to scale up. Yeah, to be honest, not for the leaderboard because the leaderboard not, will not be with us after we uh, finish the training. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say an insider tip for me is that if I look at the people who were most successful over the years, it's the ones who spent a lot of time and effort practicing how to work with others and how to communicate. Because those people, that discipline and that mindset was more useful to them than learning any one piece of technology. So I would like to, and so I'm showing you again this picture of Suresh Joachim, who's standing on one leg. And, you know, maybe I need a picture of a guy who's standing on one leg and just has like two toes down from the other leg. And I'd like to encourage everyone to get away from that. Um, and then the third, the third competency that we're trying to prepare you for, which we'll talk about in depth, and that's the whole supported job search phase, is the whole process to actually uh, get into a global level job. So just to summarize, to bring everything back together, the point that I wanted to make is that I believe that you need both. I'm not here to say forget the technical side because that's uh, part of why we're here. But we are not a university. Um, we are not a boot camp. We are here because we think we have identified a pathway to get you to a global level job. And the point of today's discussion is that in order to be successful at A, getting a job, and B, being successful in that job, you need to develop your communication skills, your professionalism, and you need to first get your first job in the ladder, which we'll talk about. But professionalism and communication skills are really important. 
So with the remaining time that we have, I think we have 19 minutes. I'd love to have a discussion to answer any questions. Um, I'd like to hear dissenting uh, viewpoints or people who disagree. But finally, I would, most importantly, I would actually like to make this practical, right? I'm not here just to say, yeah, this is great. Um, I think the hardest point is how to actually do it. And if anyone has strategies on what's the right way to do it, I think we've heard a few. One is people are saying they keep going, they keep doing it uh, throughout the week so they don't fall behind. That was one. I heard somebody say that they work with colleagues and they have a discussion about it. That's two. Are there any other strategies? Um, that people follow. Any questions on, I think the part that you can't see, but I can see because I've, we've now been doing this since 2017, is the difference that it makes over the, the difference that these career skills make over the long term. So over to you guys. You can type your questions, you can put your hands up. Abdul Rahman. Uh, hi, Aaron. Uh, hi. It's nice to see you after this long time. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I, I was have here, a question. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question about uh, the last three months. Uh, from my understanding, it's about uh, job uh, preparation. So if it's uh, if this is correct, uh, why we now have uh, uh, career exercises and career sessions uh, can you please uh, restress this? Yeah, I think that's a good It's a good point. The last three months are not about job preparation. It's actually job applications. So we will have some career skills, but we want you in during this phase to also be thinking about um, how to ask good questions. Um, yeah, the, the professionalism, communication, different no aspects of knowledge and different attitudes. In practice, many of, as soon as people start getting interviews, their focus goes rightly to preparing for that interview. So during these three months, we really have you full-time. The second three months are less full-time. And so the focus there is on applying for jobs and brushing up your skills and preparing for uh, interviews and preparing to move into work. So that's why we want to squeeze it all into these three months. Mikias? Hello, guys. How are you? Good, good. How are you? So, I think one strategy that can be useful is usually the technical challenges are hard. So, and there are a lot of points that will get stuck on. So, what I usually do is when I get stuck on some technical challenge for a long time, what I do is I go to the career challenge because they are kind of fun to do. Uh, than the technical ones. So I'll go there and I'll do some uh, career challenge and I'll that will give me an ease of mind. Then I'll come back to the technical challenge and do some uh, challenges. That's kind of the approach that I use. It might be helpful for you guys. So. And does it work well for you, Mikias? Yes, it works good. It takes my mind off the technical challenge for a while. Yeah. which is an advantage and at the same time i can i'll be able to do some career challenge yeah perfect okay melat um mine is sort of a question about how can we <clears throat> communicate like uh better is it a i mean uh communicating better does, does it mean that we need to reply to text fast enough or um yeah you, you know how, how can we communicate better especially if, if it's remote it's going to be uh, uh, with uh, texting or slack so uh, is it writing in a formal manner is it constructing our sentences in a, in a more formal way or is it just like replying fast uh, okay let let me give you some uh, scenario that you can uh, advise me on uh if there is a deadline that i needed to meet let's say it's on friday and uh I keep working on it till uh, maybe Friday morning or uh, Saturday night, and then um, my bad, not Thursday night. So, uh, and then I was unable to fulfill the the requirements for my boss. And how should I communicate that with my boss? What what are the ways to communicate it? Because I I was honestly working on it, but then I couldn't meet, uh, you know 
the required things uh, for all sorts of reasons. Could be technical, could be uh, in, in reason. So uh, this is my question. Thank you. Yeah. So I think one of the strategies that I would advise each of you to adopt when you get into work, especially if you get into remote work, um, is that you want to make it very clear what are you working on and you want to give your manager the opportunity to that they don't have to put a lot of time or effort into knowing what it is that um, you're doing, but they can just read, right? So you want to make them a consumer of information and not that they have to demand information from you. So I would advise each and every one of you to adopt the following uh, rhythm, that twice a day, once first thing in the morning and once at the end of the end of the day, your work day, whatever it is, depending on your time zones, you send, you spend five minutes saying, this is what I plan to work on. This is why I've chosen what I'm going to work on. Um, and this is where I could need some input. And you're not expecting an answer. This is You are able to manage your own time and say, this is what I'm going to do. But it gives your boss A, information on what you're doing. And B, it gives him or her the opportunity to say, actually, I want you to prioritize A, B, or C. And then the second thing you do every single day is at the end of the day, you say, this is what I plan to do. This is what I actually got done. And if there's anything that you need help on, you say, this is where I need help. And a big part of that and a big part of your success will be understanding how to prioritize, not to get everything done, but when you say, Malat, that you weren't able to get the thing done, I think that's a very broad term. What I would like to hear you say is, I was able to get all of the high priority things done, but I wasn't able to get some of the medium priority things done and some of the nice to haves also weren't done. So I think when you're, the way you frame the question, you framed it as almost an entire, uh, an entire thing. Like it's like you're preparing a, a three course meal for somebody and I couldn't, you couldn't make all of those dishes. What I would rather <clears throat> have you say is to say, you know what, I got the main, I got the bread made, I got the meat made, I got the sauce made, the salad wasn't finished and the dessert, I had to make something simple, but I got the dish made but it's not that I didn't make food, I only got the essential priorities done. So if you adopt this approach, that every day you spend 10 minutes, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, keeping your manager up to date, your manager should appreciate that and your manager will know exactly what you're up to. And if you do this repeatedly, um, you should not be surprised that on Friday, you didn't manage it because you've kept him or her up to date throughout the week. But that's, that's uh, if I look at the competencies that we talked about before, that covers professionalism and it also covers communication. You need to be able to do both. Does that make sense? I think they'll it be the, make sense. Thank you. They, they will be the most ten, the most effective 10 minutes you spend every day because what I what also happens to me from time to time, is the ability to say to somebody who's reporting to me, if you're working on three things, I love it when people ask me what is what's highest priority. Now, I de I like it even more if those people understand what's priority for the organization. But if they don't know, they should be asking. Yeah, we have ten more minutes, guys. Any other questions, thoughts? Hi, Aaron. Right. Uh, uh, so for this week, we're doing a project in a, a groups of six and more. So yeah. can you give us a pointer or an, or an advice working with uh, big groups, how to communicate well or how to you know keep up with each other and stuff like that? Yeah, very good question. So I'll give you a, I'll give you a bunch of points. And if we want to have a separate session, I'm happy to schedule something. Um, first of all, um, understand that the success of the group is, uh, it's not any one person's uh, success. Everyone, the success of the group is the success of everybody. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean that the hardest working person or the smartest person or the most experienced person 
or the best looking person or the richest person should be doing more or doing less, but you win together. And that means that a successful group is probably not the person, not, not the group which has uh, only the best people, but it's probably the group who uses the resources of all six people uh, in the most effective way. So I think that's one. Two is I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you allocate one person as whose job is to do no technical work, but is simply to manage the work of the other five people. Now, one of the things that we've seen in the past is that person sometimes feels intimidated because he or she doesn't uh, feel like they know as much about the job as a uh, person, as the other people. But as you go further in your career, you'll recognize that the ability to manage people means that you don't need to know everything about what those people are doing. You need to understand enough and to keep people coordinated and keep them on track. The third is, I think you should be communicating regularly. I would advocate in today's Monday, you should be having at least two calls today, two calls tomorrow. On Wednesday and Thursday, you can see, but on Friday, have two calls just to align everybody and make sure everyone knows where uh, everyone else is standing. And it should be the job of the project manager um, to be arranging those calls and making sure that everyone shows up. So I'm gonna go through that again. One is that making sure that everyone has a role. The second is that there's a project manager who's assigned and that person's job is only to keep people on top and on track with what they're going to, what they're supposed to be delivering. And the third is regular, um, there's a term that Yebabel uses, which I like, which is oversaturated communication. Over communicate. This is what I'm working on. This is what I'm thinking about. This I have a question. Um, let's sit beside each other and just share our screens and work together. Let's oversaturate those uh, those questions, those uh, communications. I'm sorry. And the fourth is when there's an issue, call it out. Don't let somebody get away with not showing up. Don't let somebody not hand in their materials on time. Don't let wounds fester until they become something serious. You should be addressing those, especially if you only have a week. You need to make sure that every single day you're hitting your schedule. And if you, if a good project manager knows exactly who has to do what, to buy when, to which level of quality, and you have a good plan, the rest will sort itself out. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, guys? We can also use the time because we can also use the time for me to understand how I can be more useful uh, in the remaining. We have about half the technical training left. How can I be more useful? Any wishes? What can I do? How can the careers team be more useful? What's what are some wishes? You can also type them. For efficiency, we can type them. We can also put our hands up. Mubarak, go ahead. For everyone else, we can just type. OK, my question is, like, especially when it comes to soft skills, Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, I can't say our nature, maybe our behavior, somehow we maybe introvert or extrovert. That matters when it comes to communication especially when you communicate with new people so like how can we handle that case uh, even though it is not uh, related with me because I'm, i can't i can't talk to anyone i meet so that's not my problem but as as, as a general how can we handle that so what i've found is that when people struggle to communicate it's because they they they're they're not sure what the in-between step is. So for example, what we try and get people to do at 10 Academy intensive training is to start by saying, I must speak once per meeting. I must ask at least one question. I must put my hand up and communicate at least one time. And that familiarity, and even if we had, we've had people whose English is very poor, we've had people who had stuttering problems and they weren't able to speak in the right way, but if they adopt that uh, sort of rule or that checklist that I must speak at least once or I have to practice or I have to be present, I think that's one. The second is, it's related, is don't, don't ignore a discussion. You have to take part also in the social discussions. You must also learn how to 
And, you know, the people I find who are not able to take part in social discussions, it's usually because, it's usually not because they're too shy. It's usually because they're not aware enough of how to interact uh, with what people are talking about. So I, for example, I don't like sports, but I grew up in Canada where people talk a lot about sports. And so what I had to do, uh, and I still have to do here where I live now in Germany, is to know enough about what's going on in the world of sports so that I have something to talk about with other people. Because if I'm interacting with people here where I'm working, and I have, have no, if I have no idea what's going on in the world of football or the world of uh, whatever people watch, then I, I become a little bit cast away. So I think it's practicing and it's also informing yourself uh, as it relates to what people around you are talking about. So if you, some of you will be working for American companies, you should know enough about what's happening in the American election to be able to have a, mean, a meaningful discussion. While you need to be professional enough to know what is appropriate to say and what is not appropriate to say. So it's fine, you should know what's happening, but obviously you don't want to be sending out on a public chat group saying, I support candidate A and candidate B is loser, you have to find that balance. So Daniel asks two questions, how to an answer straightforwardness and misunderstanding, uh, and how to make sure the other, under other understands our intentions clearly. Um, so Daniel, can you tell me more? I don't, I don't really understand your question. So Daniel, Daniel, I'm not really able to understand your question. Okay, so yeah, Daniel can type. Maybe uh, as I'm thinking about it, maybe one answer could be, um, I mean, in my experience, I think what's, there's certain things that all of us agree on, right? So if you're in the world, if you're at, if you're at work, you're not there to be friends, you're there to be friendly, you're there like colleagues, like teammates, but you're not necessarily there to be friends. And so I think if you are polite, but very clear, and you keep things related very much to the work at hand, then I think usually being straightforward um, is not a problem. So for example, if I'm working with a colleague and the colleague writes to me that uh, you're obviously a horrible engineer because your code stinks and it doesn't run properly is very different than if the colleague says, look, we have a target to hit in terms of the uh, the optimization or the run speed or the resource utilization of our code base. And we're currently 54% uh, below where we need to be by metric one, two, three. We only have two days left. How are we going to handle this? So I would say that by keeping very focused on why we're there together, if you're friends with somebody, that's fine. You can talk about different things, but we're talking about a professional situation. So I think relating everything to how uh, it's relevant to the matter at hand and being very specific about your point. If, you know, I really, is a pet peeve of mine when somebody writes me a message and says, I couldn't get A to work, help. And my answer is almost always, I don't know what you tried, I don't know if you've looked online. I haven't seen the error message. So if you just say help, then that's not very useful. If you rather say you asked me to do ABC, I've tried one, two, three, time is running out. Could you jump in? Because you can probably solve this in 30 minutes and it would take me three days. Keeping it to the matter at hand, I think is really useful. OK, any last questions, guys? It's a pretty quiet group. So I don't know. I don't. I can't actually diagnose. Uh, I can't diagnose that. I'm, I'm not sure what the symptom is. I'm not sure why we're so quiet today. But I'm happy to leave it here for now uh, and summarize. I think everyone agrees. Uh, I hope everyone agrees that uh, it's important to do both. We recognize that uh, the technical side is busy, but I can guarantee you that those people who they it's not just about doing the careers work, but they adopt this sort of mindset and think about how am I prioritizing? How am I working with my group? How am I communicating? How am I working on being professional and a good communicator? That all of those, um, all of those skills will 
in the two plus year time frame lead to you becoming i would say making greater progress than if you only focus on learning um, whatever technical skill is happening this week yeah so my i'd like everyone to feel free to send me direct messages uh if there's any questions um if there's if there's more that we can be doing on the career side or uh, in general please feel free to reach out uh, and otherwise i hope that we are not going to be uh, trying to stand on one leg yeah all right thanks everyone i guess we can stop recording All right, thanks.